Wikipedia has uh, started censoring some anti-war and anti-imperialist journalists. This story just came out a couple days ago. Um, I'm, here, here's a couple news outlets that they have blackballed. They have blacklisted from their uh, network in saying that they are um, unreliable sources, right? Oh, they, they post all this fake news is what, the, what Wikipedia claims. Uh, the Gray Zone Project, uh, which is a fantastic uh, news outlet uh, that's run by Max Blumenthal, but it also has Aaron Mate, who is an award-winning journalist for his Russiagate coverage, uh, Anya Parmpil, uh, we got Ben Norton on there, several amazing people. They have done on the ground coverage um, in Venezuela, in Latin America. And uh, they are incredible anti war journalists. They're incredible anti imperialist journalists. And uh, that they're being censored. The Mint Press News. I just had the owner of Mint Press News, uh, Manar Muhawish, on my podcast to talk about what she is seeing in. Minneapolis, how the cops have been treating the protesters, how things have escalated, um, and so on and so forth. So um, that is considered as a unreliable to uh, source. Telesor, which was a Latin American um, news agency that that covered uh, on the ground reporting in countries like Venezuela and talked about the coup in Venezuela. You know that that the coup we keep trying to run in Venezuela. They are considered Daily Caller, which is which is a bit of a right wing site um, that I've read a few times. I don't. I I have agreed with them maybe once, uh, and I've agreed with them on the topic of censorship. <laughs> And uh, and they are considered a, a unreliable source, according to Wikipedia. Uh, so here's the thing. Oh, oh, WikiLeaks is another one. They don't consider WikiLeaks to be a, a, uh, a reliable source, too. Fun fact. Fun fact. Uh, the Gray Zone has, has existed as the Gray Zone Project for uh, four years. Two years before that, it was part of Alternet, which was a, as it suggests, an alternative independent news, uh, news website. And in the entire time, never retracted a story. They've had to make some retractions off of like tweets that they've put out. I've seen them do that. I've seen them come out and been like, hey, I made a mistake. They didn't really go into the specifics and yada, yada, yada. But uh, major stories like this, this story that we're covering, uh, stories about how Sheldon Adelson was, uh, was paying to have Julian Assange spied on uh in uh in the ecuadorian embassy which is illegal to do uh they spied on his meetings with his lawyers which is illegal to do which means that his case should be uh should be null and void as a mistrial uh didn't have to retract that statement like these guys are real investigative journalists you know wikileaks never retracted a statement i have watched new york times print out bullshit about my friends i've like in real time i've watched them fabricate shit <laughs> about like uh, there's a story about lee camp that i've told uh, on these live streams before i have fucking watched them do it so there's a story that came out uh talking about the new york times in the new york times in 2007 about how there has been a corporate control of information on wikipedia the cia uh, FBI, NYPD, BP, and other major corporations have infiltrated Wikipedia with its use of free editors, right? You just make a, you, you kind of make a, uh, a username and you can go in and edit and add your own sources and things of that sort, change information. Um, so corporations have basically been doing that on Wikipedia at least since 2007, at least, probably a lot longer than that, right? We discovered it in 2007 that this was happening. And uh, they blackball anybody that speaks out against these corporations. They pay editors. That's their whole job. That's their whole job uh, is that they pay these editors and they go in and they change information. So the CIA has paid people to go in, uh, change things about Iran, change things about Iraq, change things about their involvement in coups in these countries, uh, coups in Latin America. The NYPD was paying people to go into Wikipedia pages and change information about Eric Garner's death. BP was was doing it to change information about uh, fossil fuels and climate change, you know. Um, and the and the founder of Wikipedia uh, has said 
fuck all about it, right? This guy's like the guy that touts objectivism. He's like, oh, it's all about objectivism. All voices are important. You know, we got to make sure, but we got to make sure that we are objectively telling the truth. Uh, but I'm going to censor this side. I'm going to censor this side of the argument, though. Shh, 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 Don't, don't, don't say anything about BP. Shh, 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 shh. But we are objective. Shh, shh, don't say anything about BP, but we're objective. There are political narratives that uh, uh, that are favored, and uh, so we're going to watch this video to kind of show you how these political narratives are are favored. Uh, so this is a, let me make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, so this is a course in Israel um, about changing information on Wikipedia. And I'm going to play a part of this because they're, and this is a politician that says it too. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's do a little intro. Hope you guys can hear all this. In conjunction with My Israel uh, has arranged uh, instruction day for wiki editors. The goal of the day is to, um, teach people how to edit in Wikipedia, which is the number one source of information today in the world. As a way of example, if someone searches the Gaza flotilla, we want to be there. We want to be the guys who influence what is written there, influence. how it's written, and to ensure that it's balanced and uh, Zionist in the nature. I came here to learn. So, so he wants it to be balanced, but he wants to influence that it has a particular zionist bias so so he'll delete anything that doesn't have that bias uh is basically what they're saying there right and and i'm not making a statement whether i am pro or anti-israel or whatever because if you say anything bad about israel you're automatically said that you're you know you're an anti-semite or anything no the the issue is incredibly complicated uh i know some things i know there's a lot of violence from the uh, israeli military on um, Palestinians, it's it's kind of like apartheid that's going on over there. Um, I don't know enough information for me to make a total accurate statement, but that statement is basically him saying that he's going to influence the articles to have a Zionist perspective and remove anything that doesn't. Um, so he's he, they're having instruction day, which is a weird like w instruction day. Holy shit, that sounds like a fucking authoritarian thing of like we're going to have leader day where we all say nice things about the leader and it's required, right? <laughs> like all of that, it's just all weird. So why is that important is because Wikipedia claims that uh, therefore neutrality, objectivism and neutrality, that's like their big thing. But if you have people that are gonna make statements like this, where they go against this neutrality, where they are clearly putting something bias on the table, um, you know, what do you do? This is not, this is not neutrality. This is clearly taking a side. You are letting people delete things that might accurately show a different side of the argument. And they've seen this sort of stuff happen, by the way. Um, uh, the, the gray zone points out a gentleman by the name of Philip Cross, this, this mystery editor, um, and uh, he he basically goes out and smears anti-war journalists, such as Max Blumenthal, who is uh, the owner of uh, the Gray Zone Project. In fact, they go on to say shit like, uh, oh, well, the Gray Zone Project is just Max Blumenthal's blog. And it's like, no, these are fucking investigative journalists. On their own fucking dime, they flew down to Venezuela to cover what was actually going on in Venezuela to actually talk to Nicolas Maduro after a drone tried to assassinate him. And then they were like, holy shit, it's like a CIA drone that tried to assassinate this guy. <laughs> like, like they fucking went there on their own dime. They're not doing it out of some sort of sp state sponsorship, right? But they do it anywhere. Anybody that talks about um, anti-war stuff, Kyle Kalinske, who has a channel called Secular Talk, he has a bunch of anti-war videos. He does a lot of anti-establishment stuff. He goes against neo neoliberalism. Um, you know, it, which is sort of the economic principle that we live under, right? It's capitalism and neoliberalism. Those are the two uh, two kind of economic principles, I think, uh, would be sort of the easy way to, to point that out. Uh, his page was deleted in February. They just got rid of his fucking page. <laughs> uh, so the question is, if this is all about neutrality, why are there left-wing anti-war journalists 
getting deleted from this encyclopedia website. No answer from from the from from Jeremy Wales. I think this is his name. Jeremy Wales is the guy that owns Wikipedia. No answer from this guy. He has reliable sources on his website. I want to go through a couple of them. Let me scroll down to to the right section of the uh, the article that goes through it. Okay, here we are. Um, we go through a couple of these reliable sources that he considers reliable, right? Uh, so we have the New Republic. Uh, we have basically uh, News Republic is uh, most editors consider the News Republic biased or opinionated. Opinions in this ma uh, uh, magazine should be attributed. News Republic, good to go. Opinionated, but good to go. Right? Uh, anything, just to, just anything in New York. You got the Vulture, uh, uh, Grub Street, Daily Intelligencer. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the New York Daily News is eh, it's questionable. Uh, New York Post, eh, it's questionable. The New Yorker is good, even though I've seen the New Yorker post some really weird Russiagate stuff. Uh, the New York Times, which also posts really weird Russiagate stuff uh, that, that that has been constantly debunked over the last four years by by Robert Mueller himself and by the guy that that uh, by CrowdStrike. I uh, I addressed that in a in a video as well. E Entertainment News is eh. Uh, the Economist is good. There's a website called Electronic Info. Eh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck up the word of the uh, intifada, electronic intifada, uh, and they say that it is uh, unreliable with, with respects to its reputation. Uh, probably an anti-establishment website, anti the gray zone, which, like we talked about, has an award-winning um, journalist, Aaron Mate, won an award for his coverage of and his coverage and investigation of RussiaGate to debunk it. Uh, they are. They put they publish false and fabricated information. Uh, the Guardian, I've I've seen the Guardian kind of fuck up a couple times. Uh, let's see what else. The British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, that's a state funded. That's that's I mean that's a British state funded thing. Um, there's something called Build. I don't know what Build is. I guess it's a tabloid. Uh, Bellingcat. Okay, so let's talk about Bellingcat for a minute. Um, Bellingcat, as you can see here, is funded by the U.S. government and is a regime-shamed arm for the National Endowment of Democracy, a CIA cutout co uh, created by Ronald Reagan and is a host to uh, a crew of regime change advocates who work with the Western, Western government-backed organization like the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council uh, is also partnered with Facebook to police news on Facebook, and they are responsible for those psychographics that uh, Cambridge Analytica put out to manipulate people's votes to get Donald Trump elected, which was paid for by Robert Mercer, who is an American billionaire. Uh, so so all like the, the, this is just sort of like things that you can put together. Here's the hilarious part about this. Uh, Bellingcat's founder was a video game obsessed college dropout by the name of Elliot Higgins and has no journalistic experience or specialized knowledge. Uh, and he claims that he's qualified b to cover, you know, war journalism and stuff because he spent hours uh, playing video games, uh, which gave gave him the idea that these mysteries can be cracked. The dude literally said that I'm good. I'm good at journalism because I played a lot of video games, so I should be a journalist. Guys, I'm a karate master because I played Tekken three a lot in high school. So, like, I'm just, I'm just like a, I'm just like a super big karate badass, uh, because I played, I, I mean, so you know, I don't know if you guys want to fight me or not, but uh, I'm a super big karate badass, Tekken three, pretty cool. But this guy is considered to be, he's on the green, he's checked. The guy that said that he's a journalist because he played video games is a reliable source on Wikipedia. Might be a couple more. Washington Post. Oh, yeah, Washington Post. 16 articles uh, trying to smear Bernie Sanders in one day. That is two per hour. Um, so, uh, yeah, Washington Times is questionable. The Weekly Standard, I'm not familiar with that website. Alternet, unreliable. Al Jazeera, reliable. Al Jazeera has done some decent work. Telesaur, unreliable. Think progress is questionable. Think progress goes back and forth for me. 
they were a pretty good source at one point, but I've I've seen them post some really weird uh, bias articles. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the Warp, WikiLeaks, another publication that has never had to retract a story. Everything that they publish is true. Why is WikiLeaks on here? Because the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, and basically anybody that's in the establishment hates Julian Assange for revealing their crimes to the world. Crimes that they are not in prison for. The dude revealed how the American military orders to murder murders of civilians and and journalists. And he's in prison right now. And uh, Wikipedia considers them to be an unreliable source for proving that shit. But no, the video game guy, though, that guy's super reliable. Don't worry. If you, if you play a video game, fucking nailed it. So, uh, some of the gray zone sensors, they talk about the gray zone sensors. Uh, they are right wing pro coup anti, uh, pro Guaido. If you don't know who Guan Guaido is, don't worry. Neither do the people of Venezuela. <laughs> Nobody knows. Like none of the people of Venezuela know who he is. At one point, Mike Pence came out was just like this fucking guy. He's the president of Venezuela. And everybody in Venezuela was like, who is that guy? Does anybody? Should we? Get Raul. Does Raul know this fucking guy? And they were just like, no, we don't know who this fucking guy is. He's just some guy. Uh, the, most famously, Juan Guaido, um, what the Venezuelan people that do know Juan Guaido is known for, is he's this anti-Chavista that uh, during one of these protests that were happening, uh, like these pro, you know, the, the, they were kind of pro-socialist, pro-Maduro people, and they were marching and he is from an anti-Maduro, anti-Chavista group that jumped out in front of this march and, uh, and mooned everybody. He showed his ass to the people. That's, that's, what, that's what Guan Guaido is known for. Uh, and, uh, and that guy is who uh, Vice President Pence President Donald Trump, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, uh, whatever the fuck Chuck Schumer is, Mitch McConnell, all agree is the rightful president of Venezuela. He's never run for office. Venezuela has a better election system than we do. International election observers were like, this is the fucking, this is great. And then they look at like our election and they just hold up a picture of a garbage can on fire. Like that's what our election is. <laughs> like, and they're like, no, but... But we, but our thing is what we should send to other countries. You know, this garbage fire, like that's, we're, th this is like the garbage fire for the people. Like that's what the fucking, ugh. So uh, the people that censor the gray zone, that's basically say the gray zone is uh, not a reliable source, right? It are, are basically people that are pro Guaido people they are they are venezuela like pro -Vene pro guaido venezuelan operatives which is a bit of a mouthful uh, it's unsure if they're paid or not because wikipedia doesn't disclose that information in their logs but it's literally like one guy that keeps going in and changing all of the information uh that they put up about venezuela and if they cite things like the gray zone things like mid press news alternet empire files telesur um, they flag it and they say that they are unreliable sources. And they claim the reason why they are unreliable is because the gray zone uh, talks to networks like RT. Ooh, our Russia Today, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, because Bla Max Blumenthal has shown up on some RT shows and he's talked about how... Uh, all the things we're talking about, right? The Venezuelan coup. He talks about anti-war stuff. He talks about how neoliberalism is here. He talks about how uh, Pete, Mayor Pete is involved in a bunch of neoliberal think tanks that were trying to sabotage the American election by using Shadow, the app that basically fucked up everything in Iowa, right? Uh, he talks about all this stuff, and they were like, Bob fucking Russian. I knew it. That's all... That's all. Ru that's the. That's what the Russians say about. They. They. They also say Mayor Pete was in a neoliberal think tank, and it's like, wasn't he though? Isn't this it? And they're like, yeah, but it is. But you shouldn't say it. 
if you say it, you're a Russian is basically how they operate, right? Just a, a fun fact, I have also been on RT. I've also been on Free Speech TV, uh, which is considered some sort of, you know, fucking weirdo thing. Uh, I've also appeared on NPR networks. Uh, NPR, by the way, one of the NPR stations in, in Arkansas, uh, I got an NPR interview in Arkansas, uh, got the, the, the time of the show wrong. Uh, they got my city wrong. They said I was a Philadelphia-based comedian when in the press release I say I'm a Pittsburgh-based comedian. Uh, and guess guess what these alternative networks that I've been on don't get wrong. Uh, none of those things because they read press releases. <laughs> I've been on like a bunch of different NPR networks and, and the one in Arkansas, uh, in, in Fayetteville specifically, was the one where they were like Philadelphia comedian and I was like, no, nope, that's wrong. That's not a Different cities, different cities, different cities. Uh, here's the thing though, Gray Zone does not get any funding from any like state. They don't get funding from Russia. Um, they don't get any funding from um, Canada, you know, another communist country obviously, or China or any of these other countries, they are independent. They, they, they work on independent donations from people all around the globe, by the way. Um, and there were reports, oh man, this was, when they, were, when they were covering Iran, there were reports of people that were paying them through like PayPal or Venmo. And if they were uh, from outside the US, they were blocking those payments from getting through. There was a there was like a, a French patron that emailed them and said that the the PayPal bounced back and that's never happened to him before, um, and uh, uh, so yeah so so they were you know they're they're constantly censored and they're and they're going after them in different ways for covering anti imperialist and anti war stories. Now, uh, Wikimedia, which is the uh, which is the company that owns Wikipedia because that's how this shit works, right? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how Jack Dorsey is giving um, like $5 million to Andrew Yang's Humanity Forward uh, nonprofit thing that he's running. And uh, he's not personally giving that wealth. He's giving it through this other NGO that he's created, uh, this nonprofit that Jack Dorsey's created. And it's like, wait a minute, why does it have to come out of this nonprofit? Why can't you just make it come out of your pocket and say that you're making a donation? That's what we do, right? Like when I donate to a mutual aid or if you guys donate to me or if you guys donate to the Black Visions Collective or Level Up or any of these other sources, like don't you guys just do it out of your own pocket? Like we don't create another LLC to be like, let's funnel the money through the LLC and do it as like, a, like, no, why can't, you know? So it's just like the same thing. It's like Wikimedia is the corporation that they, that they help, but Wikipedia is a volunteer run um, encyclopedia website. But Wikimedia is the company uh, that uh, the Jimmy Wales, I called him Jeremy Wales earlier. That's my fault. So these are the largest donors of the corporation that uh, Wikimedia, right? Uh, we got Google, we got Microsoft, we got Apple, and we got Craigslist, which is weird. Is this like, are we just like, it's just like Wikipedia is just going to be a bunch of people that's like, I need things fixed in my basement. Cite my sources. The sources is my basement. That's the that Wikipedia. Like, yep, that's a source. <laughs> He's nailing it. <laughs> Put that up. <laughs> uh, in, in 2018, it was reported that they have $145 million in assets. Okay. And, and they make $105 million in revenue. Uh, so really, it's like they, they make $250 million. Like that's how much money that they make through these, through these donations. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Wales, this is the guy that owns this Wikimedia stuff. Here's his belief. Uh, he believes in objectivism and volunteerism. He's an Ayn An Rand fan. Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand or Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand. Uh, anyway, he believes in Randism is what he calls it. And um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll play you guys a clip because the clip is important. It kind of explains his philosophy in uh, what he believes. 
is the uh, is is sort of the the big founding thing. So this is the article, and da, 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 where's the clip there? Ah, there it is. I scrolled past it. Sorry, guys. Uh, so this is the clip. I want to make sure that the sound is going to work on this. Uh, sorry, I don't think I selected the sound on it. Fucking up, you guys. I'm fucking it all up. It's over. People are going to tune out because I fucked it up. All right. Now I'm sharing the sound. Yeah, I got the sound icon. All right. So this is this is him in an interview. So this is a short video. Uh, so the, it's Wikipedia founders on Ayn Rand making art and making money. So let's listen. Jimmy Wales, I want to know, how do you explain the point and how do you feel about it that so that Bill Gates, the founders of Google and others have become fantastically rich on their internet success and other huge contributors, including you, I think of Tim Berners-Lee, Richard Stallman, uh, have not. And I also am wondering what would Ayn Rand make of it? I think of her as being an avid individualist and capitalist. But We're all wondering what Ayn Rand is um, thinking of it. Yeah, not much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it is interesting, and it is one of the questions that comes up quite often. People say, oh, you're an objectivist. How come you're not milking this for every last cent? Um, and I think that's really a misunderstanding of, of what objectivism is about. Um, if you think back, if you're familiar with the, with the fountainhead, right, um, and you remember Howard Rourke, who went and worked in a quarry rather than compromise his principles on what he was trying to accomplish artistically and creatively with his work, when he could have made tons of money as a famous architect, um, that you know, you, you realize, no, it's not really about making uh, the most money. It's about achieving your artistic vision. Having said that, I don't want to imply that that either Howard Rourke or I would think it's wrong for people to be making lots of money. I think it's really fine. It's really great. Um, it's just, well, the particular historical path that I took to accomplish my work took me in this nonprofit route. For me, it's a, it's a lot more it's about um, volunteerism. In other words, um, uh, that that everyone who participates in Wikipedia does so of their own free will. If they don't want to do it, they don't do it, and that's fine. There's no compulsion involved, and that's really the moral principle um, that I think is far more important than, than for-profit versus non-profit. Down here, um, we go, uh, and here's, here's this part right here that, oh, it's highlighted the entire article. <laughs> Uh, it says, it, Wikipedia editors have upheld the diehard objectivist Jimmy Wales, as the New York Times put it in 2008, as a benevolent dictator, constitutional monarch, digital evangelist, and a spiritual leader. That's fucking creepy as shit. Uh, that's the dude that owns Wikipedia. And... So he chooses objectivism and volunteerism, which basically is like he's reaping the benefit of what other people are editing, right? Like other people get to do the work. They might get paid. They might not get paid. But hey, it's up to them about how much they want to edit and how much they don't want to edit. So it's fine. Don't even worry about it, you guys. Uh, and then he reaps the benefit of it. So then he's getting money from all of these other things to grow his platform to get more editors that may or may not be getting paid and how they do get paid is by the corporations that pay jimmy wales to run his site companies like google and microsoft and apple and craigslist and the cia and the fbi and the nypd and bp they all pay wikipedia and then they hire other people whose sole job is to constantly be on wikipedia to edit narratives and he's fine with that because the companies are also paying with him or, or, or they're paying him to be objective about the money he's receiving from these corporations to control the narrative through Wikipedia, which is one of the largest and high traffic websites. And so basically, because he receives these profits, he has deemed himself the god of objectivism. That's, I think, what Jimmy Wales thinks of himself. That he's this digital, I mean, they described him as a digital evangelist in 2008. You know, like this guy, I I'm wholeheartedly think that if, like he, if you say objectivism to him or just quote the fountainhead, this guy will probably get like a raging fucking boner. Um, and I have to, I, I, will, dis, I will disclose this. Um, 
uh, first of all, who doesn't get a raging boner at the thought of Ayn Rand? Am I right, fellas? Huh? Come on, get out of town. Uh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know a lot about Ayn Rand. I've I've seen a couple of videos about Ayn Rand. I've seen her speak a few times, and I have disagreed with the woman more often than not. Um, the whole like individualist, hyper capitalist viewpoint. I mean, if you if you guys have paid attention to my comedy and watch my shit regularly, like I'm a fucking weirdo cooperative socialist, you know, like I'm a weirdo revolutionary cooperative socialist. That's, that's just what I am. I'm just like, Hey, everybody should help each other out. If you can pay for it, that's cool. If you can't, that's okay. Come hang out, come learn some things. It's fun. We're having a good time and we're learning and we're doing a good time. Uh, this guy's like, no, if you can make money off of it, you should make money off of it. And that's what they're doing. Right? Like he talks about volunteerism. Yeah. The volunteers aren't getting paid for doing the work to make Wikipedia. Like, the thing that makes Wikipedia what it is, he is reaping the benefits of it. He's just like, I made a thing that you can edit and put information on. I guess that's that's good. Give me money. And that's and that's what they fucking do. Uh, Wales went in front of Congress and uh, he's quoted to say uh, that he will maybe maybe be helpful to the to government operations and homeland security. That's what he wanted to do. In the same speech, he says he wants to uphold the American values of generosity, hard work, and freedom of speech. Motherfucker, you censor anti-war journalists, and you're talking about freedom of speech? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can't sit there and be like, hey, if you talk about the military-industrial complex and how we don't need to currently be engaging in seven-plus wars and also try to have a military and uh, financial coup of the country of Venezuela as well as the country of Bolivia and the country of Nicaragua, if you say anything about any of that sort of shit and not just say, hey, the CIA is pretty great. We should all give hand jobs to everybody in the CIA. If you don't say that, we'll fucking bar you. We will fucking censor you. We will put a red bar over your journalistic name and we will kill all of your journalistic integrity. If you're a real investigative journalist, we will say, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Like, that's not freedom of speech. He has an overwhelming amount of wealth based off of the volunteerism of other people. And he claims to be, oh, he wants to uphold generosity. Motherfucker, you're not generous. If you were, you would be paying the people that volunteer to cite the sources on your website. Hard work for volunteers. Yeah, that you're upholding American values, which is overworked and underpaid. That's American values. That's what it really is. Wikipedia um, deleted the sources about uh, Venezuelan foreign aid. Um, so the USAID, which is basically the charitable industrial complex wing of the CIA uh, that have been known to be connected to coups, the USAID sent aid to Venezuela claiming that, oh, well, it's Venez oh, the people can't eat. Well, it was because of American sanctions that they weren't able to eat. You put, Amer you put sanctions to make sure that they wouldn't be able to get the money that they actually deserve to get. The, the, like Venezuela's actual money they were being barred from getting. So um, the state wasn't able to, uh, to, to, to get money to run these programs to feed these people. So the USAID sent these aid trucks down and there were claims that, oh, the Venezuelans are burning. The pro Maduro people are burning the trucks. And there were live stream, real time live streams that proved that it wasn't, that it was actually the, uh, the USAID truck drivers themselves that were like burning these trucks. And there were live streams proving all this. And people use that to cite the source and, uh, and Wikipedia took them down. <clears throat> they deleted the source. Live streams from actual people on the ground. And Wikipedia deleted that shit. Hedges, uh, Chris Hedges, if you're unfamiliar with Chris Hedges, not particularly a fun person. <laughs> no, I like Chris Hedges a lot. It's just, he's not somebody that like, He's not going to give you the hopeful outlook. He's just like, hey, listen, this is how we're fucked. All right. Everybody should identify how we're fucked. Okay. Next. <laughs> like, uh, Hedges basically said that uh, this is a tool to propagate the reigning ideologies and biases of the ruling elite. And that is 100% what Wikipedia is doing. Uh, they, are, they are definitely showing you one side. He's aligning himself with the government. Jimmy Wales is aligning himself with the government. 
Um, he's talking about uh, being helpful to government operations and homeland security. That's why the CIA gets to fund it. That's why the CIA gets to hire people to to change narratives. The FBI does the same thing. The NYPD is going into changing information about Eric Garner, you know, and getting caught with their hand in the proverbial cookie jar. This guy's the, 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 Jimmy Wales and Wicked, and and he, you know what? It, what really sucks is like I've used them as a source before because there is some information that that you know you can only find on Wikipedia. But it's but it's interesting because I've had a feeling that this kind of shit was going on, and this is you know basically confirmation because I was looking at it and I was going, mm, this is this is kind of a weird twist on, you know, this is they're they're kind of making some of these strikes appear like it's the strikers' fault. But based on the information, this is just a response to the government not recognizing the strikers as people. Um, you know, the, there there were some the, just the way the language was being used. It it seemed very odd, um, and it was essentially to prop up the people like the like the anti strikers. You know, like oh, these guys are just trying to earn a living. They're just trying to make millions and millions of dollars off the backs of the American worker. How dare they? You know, and it's and that's the objectivism to this guy. He has no problem with with people becoming millionaires, and he's making sure that the editors, the volunteers that are going in and making these edits, are pushing that narrative. Let's look at some comments, Jen. I'm 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 going to look at your big long comment in a bit. I'm going to bring that up at the end. Uh, he said, articles came out today exposing Fox News for al alerting pics of Capitol Hill protesters for overlapping uh, pics from different photographers. Uh, Fox ended up kind of admitting it. Yeah, they had to retract the story because they because they make shit up. <laughs> uh, leader days, Donald Trump's beat day here. Yeah, uh, I believe that I was on tour. I think that's coming up. If I remember correctly, I think it's coming up. Uh it's either coming up or or it, it just happened and we nobody cared. Jay Jackson, oh, you're a martial arts master. What are your top three special moves? Uh, we got, uh, we, we got, uh, I got this right here. So I have a weapon of choice and it's, uh, it's the kitty punch. So I got, I, I get my cat thing, I pow pow, right in the eyes. Boom, that's one. Uh, the other one is a, is a, uh, is a flying roundhouse kick. Uh, so I fly in the air and I twist around and I roundhouse somebody right to the face. Uh, I taught that to Chuck Norris. So you're welcome, Chuck. Uh, and my third move is, uh, is, uh, I, um, I, I, uh, uh, I read the entire, uh, great expectations. Boom. That's a winner every time. Uh, Jen, I played a lot of Pac-Man explains the weight gain. <laughs> Uh, uh, Wales, J, J. Jackson again. Wales sounds exactly like a second year philosophy student who just got done reading Atlas Shrug and brings it up at parties every single conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, it kind of does. He's like, I figured I kind of lo I, I learned what libertarianism is. You guys want to talk about libertarianism and only the definition of it that I read in a in a in a, in a economy class book. Uh, Jen, I'm gonna I'm just look away for a sec. Do you do you <laughs> do what you do? Nothing to see here. Honor me in my charitable spirit. Yeah, that's Jimmy Wales. That's Jimmy Wales in a nutshell, you guys. Yeah, it's nailing it. He's just pretending to be fucking honorable when he's fucking not. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for your comments, folks. I appreciate it. It's always fun when you guys leave comments. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit that like button. You share it around with some friends, maybe with some enemies, you know, people that you really think would enjoy uh, video content like this. And make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that bell to get notifications when I put up more videos. Uh, there are going to be a ton of videos coming out on this channel. I release a few videos every single week. I do a couple segments called Forkful of Noodles, where we talk about ideas, history, philosophy. I do more ranty videos uh, called Road Reflections, where I talk about news stories, current events, uh, that sort of stuff. And then The Dispatch, which is uh, which are also current event written news, and they are a portion of my uh, audio interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk. So if you enjoy those sort of things, this is the channel 
for you. Plus, there'll be some some stand-up footage that I will be putting up as well. So there is regular content that goes up. Uh, and uh, if you want some alternative, independent, socially conscious, radical comedy, this is the channel for you to be. I mean, I, I don't know why you haven't hit the subscribe button already. I feel like you should have hit it maybe six or seven times at this point. Uh, so, so if you enjoy that sort of stuff, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.